People across the metro rely on first responders to lend a helping hand. But when those sworn to protect us need help, they rely on their own to step in. And tonight, First Alert 4's Caroline Hecker has a traumatic story of heroism and brotherhood you'll only see here on First Alert 4. I was riding along with a St. Charles County officer for a story about expired temporary tags when we got a call to bring an AED to the track at Christian High School. When we pulled up, I saw nearly a dozen police officers huddled around someone on the ground. The man was lifeless. The only motion we saw, the rhythm of CPR compressions. We backed away, giving them room to work, unsure of what the outcome would be. I need fingers on a pulse. Looks like v -fib on a monitor. No pulse. I don't, I don't feel Everybody pulse. clear? These are the harrowing moments St. Charles County police officers and paramedics train for. In the white shirt is Lieutenant Pat Sykes, an ex-SWAT commander. He's no stranger to performing CPR, but this time it's different. It makes it really hard to think that your, whether you wanted it to or not, your friend just died in front of you. And you were one of the people that is responsible for if he lives or dies, and that's a very emotional thing to go through. His patient is Dean Alexander, a 27-year veteran of the St. Charles City Police Department and 18-year member of the SWAT team. He's also a dear friend. After finishing a physical fitness test for a part-time gig at the Sheriff's Department, he says Dean stopped to talk with some old friends. About 30 minutes later, as he was walking to his car, the unthinkable happened. I heard something hit the fence and then a body hit the ground and it was Dean. <laughs> I turned to look and I honestly thought Dean passed out. You know, Dean fainted. And uh, I immediately ran over to Dean and realized he wasn't breathing, didn't have a pulse. Keep coming back, keep coming back. Sykes, along with a team of others, administered CPR on Dean for what he says felt like 15 or 20 minutes, struggling to get him back. I think we lost him at least once before the medics got there. I remember three times specifically where the third time is really what, what, what got me and I thought, I don't know if we're going to get him back this time. It's all good, man. We got you. With things looking grim, Sykes says he started yelling at his friend. He's coming back. Desperate coming back. to get through to good, him. Good, good, good. After a fourth shock from the AED, Dean was back. Last thing I remember was getting a little lightheaded, and uh, that was it. His official diagnosis, a widow maker, a full blockage in the heart's biggest artery, leading to cardiac arrest. They hadn't have caught it when they did. If they hadn't initiated CPR and AD immediately, there's a 6% chance of survival rate when that one goes. Last year, St. Charles County 911 dispatch received more than 130,000 911 calls. One, two, three, four. Dispatchers one, offer two, CPR instructions to callers, bridging that gap until help arrives. On the other end of the phone, Hey, hey, are you okay? Knowing the basics of bystander CPR is something the St. Charles County Ambulance District preaches. We're going to bring our other hand on top, the first. As keeping blood flowing to the brain is crucial to saving a person's life. For every minute that a person lies on the ground in cardiac arrest with no CPR being performed, their chance of survival drops by about 7 to 10 percent per minute. There's pictures. Becoming familiar with an AED, also important. Everybody clear? As it walks a user step by step through the process. <laughs> this week, a ceremony at Christian High School honored those who played a role in saving Dean's life. I can't stop saying thank you. They literally saved my life. I mean, you hear that all the time, hey, you helped me out, you saved me, you, you, you hooked a brother up, blah, 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 but this is one of those few times you actually physically, had they not been there, I would be dead. And that, he says, is the true definition of brotherhood. Dean spent a couple of weeks recovering from the stents he had put in, but still plans to follow through with the gig at the sheriff's department that led him to the track that day. He says he's thankful he stopped to talk with friends. Had he not, he likely would have been behind the wheel, and this story could have ended much differently. If you're interested in learning more about CPR or AED training, visit this story on our website, KMLV.com.
Caroline Hecker, First Alert 4.